You are watching the Doc Talk Show. Bilhazia or schistosomiasis is a warm infection that can be contracted if you love to swim or bathe or if you're in contact with a fresh water body. As we have learned in the previous segment, this worm loves to live in the blood vessels that are near the small intestines, the digestive system, and it's the eggs of the worms that will cause the injury that we see in Bilhazia. When the eggs, be, when the eggs are deposited within the blood vessels, they cause scarring, and this narrows the blood vessels, resulting in a condition called portal hypertension. When this happens, this essentially means there's narrowed blood vessels with resultant increase in the blood pressure within the portal system, the blood vessels that are draining from the, blood, from the intestines to the liver will cause backflow or high blood pressure that causes engorged blood vessels, ultimately resulting in the likelihood of vomiting blood, which is the center of discussion for this evening, where we're discussing vomiting blood. Bilhaz is one of the most important causes of vomiting blood. So I want to understand how can, if someone has bilharzia, if someone has vomited blood, what will happen to them? And most important, what can they do to protect themselves, to prevent themselves from getting a condition such as bilharzia? So children love to play a lot to play in water, water swim. like swimming, when they yes. get free time, they want to go to the lake, they want yes. to go to the river. Mm -hmm. So the, it's also very common in children yeah. Because in some of the studies that were done, they found like that a survey which was done in school children around Lake Victoria, they found up to 40% of the school children had the warm infection. Yeah. And these are children who are living and, close to and the in water. Lake, the yeah. children around Lake Albert, it's been reported in up to 90%. So that of means the children. almost every child. So almost has, everyone almost every around one. the lake gets exposed. So it's a very, it is a very and, uh, big disease. That is important because infection occurs early in life and uh, usually because the, the scarring happens over time. By around 20 to 30 years, people are beginning to present with this symptom of vomiting blood because they got exposed, infected mm. as children. It started early. Yes, in so it starts younger so it's age. when they are still very young. When they are liking to go to swim yes, and yes. they swim in water, which has these worms. So eventually, 20, eventually, 30 years yes, down they, the road, they, they come down with this complication. Okay. Could that be the reason why it, they, when people start vomiting blood, it's usually a very young Yes, patient. because they get, so probably they, they like get 20, exposed when they are years. very young. Okay. Yes, so the process starts right when they're young. By the time they are in their teenage, late teenage and uh, early mm. adulthood, they've had significant scarring enough to, to make them vomit blood. Mm. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, curious to know what, if there are any complications that would arise, what, what could go wrong with this bilharzia? Are there any worries, worries to think about? Just so, to put it in perspective, yes. people may think it's just a worm. It doesn't yes, cause Yes, uh, so it's, it's a worm, but uh, in the initial phases when someone has just got infected, because it goes through the skin, uh, uh, children may get some itching, some rashes mm -hmm. on the feet at the time when the worm has, has uh, penetrated the skin. But later, once it's in the, in the intestines, someone may present with blood in stool because it causes uh, dysentery. Mm -hmm. yes, it can result it's, it's in a cause of dysentery. bloody yes. diarrhea. Yes, yes okay. because it injures the walls of the intestines. It can directly lead to, bl to bloody diarrhea. And eventually, the uh, vomiting blood is a, a long-term compli complication mm. of the infection. And who knows what, because blood is such an important resource. If someone's blood levels are low, it means they'll always be tired. Yes, they'll be tired. They, they, they have, have no energy. Difficult in breathing. Mm. Even they some of the organ swollen. systems, like the heart may begin to yes. work badly because the blood is little. Mm -hmm. And in the worst case scenario, if you vomit very, very large amounts of blood, it can result in very low blood pressure and ultimately death. So it's a, very big, yes. it's a very big uh, issue to worry about. It is. 
this bill has a disease just because we love to go swimming in water bodies that might have the worms could potentially result in a very devastating end outcome. So, um, Dr. Betty, let's imagine someone has vomited blood and you, um, you, how you think the cause might be Bilhazia, what will happen to them when they come to the hospital? So, um, if someone vomits blood as a complication of Bilhazia, these vessels actually tend to be very big and uh, by the time they bleed, the very large vessels within the esophagus. And so in most cases, the bleeding is massive. There's a lot of uh, bleeding. They vomit uh, large amounts of blood and uh, sometimes they pass some of this blood in stool. Okay. So it's an emergency. It's mm -hmm. important that if someone vomits blood in the community, they are rushed to the hospital okay. as soon as possible. Mm, because you it's, said it's a life-threatening yes, condition. Yes, because okay. usually it involves vomiting large amounts. Mm. Yes, and someone can go in shock and can actually die from it. Mm, because yes. of vomiting too much vomiting blood. Vomiting too much blood. Okay. So usually when uh, someone like that gets into the hospital, we want to stabilize them because in most cases they're in shock, the blood pressure is low, they may be restless because they vomited so much. The blood level is low, but also the blood pressure is mm. low. Sometimes it's so low that you can't pick it up using the machines okay. that we use to detect the blood pressure machines. So it's an emergency, mm. and we, within the hospital, it must be handled as such. Mm. As an emergency. Quick response and uh, resuscitation okay. to make sure we stabilize this person. Okay. Yes. So, in most uh, cases, the bleeding actually stops by itself. Mm. Yes. For for most of the patients, the bleeding stops by itself, but you just have to make sure you prevent this person from mm. uh, getting further complications okay. or dying so, from it. So how can this how can this bleeding if someone is vomiting excess amounts of blood how can it be stopped? Mm. Is there medicine available for this to stop the bleeding? Yes. So usually or some procedures yes. that they do. So the, the the medicines to stop the bleeding are available, but I want to emphasize that the most important part of treating it is actually making sure that you get the blood pressure up, you give a transfusion, that is the most important. Because mm. even with all these other um, means, you cannot take someone, for example, there are there's treatment that we can do through endoscopy, a tube that you can pass through the, the throat and you reach where the vessels are and actually tie them off. You, we can tie them off mm. with small rubber bands okay. to prevent bleeding. To prevent further bleeding. But still, you must make sure the person is stable before you can do the endoscopy. Mm. So, so with or without endoscopy, resuscitation is, is the, the most important. One. And again, it's highlighting the importance of blood because yes. a lot of the scarcity of blood in the country. Uh, could this be motivation for people to go and donate blood? I hope so. Mm. I, I, I pray that uh, with or without these people, people mm. are willing to Yes, because blood, blood is because such an important resource and blood can only be given freely yes. because it's such a life-saving it life um, life intervention. For a lot of conditions. Okay. So a condition as big as Bill has, if someone is going to vomit a lot of blood, they need to replace the blood they have lost. And this is why blood transfusions are important. Therefore, it's equally important that people uh, get into the habit, they get into the routine of donating blood, because yes. this blood would save your brother or sister, or it might even save you, the person who is donating. You never know if you might be having this worm and you develop has a much later in life. You are watching the Dark Talk Show.